Hi, I'm Stuart, and today we're going to be assembling the DAT 790 antenna from Televent. And I'm going to be showing you all the things that the instruction manual did not tell you about. The instruction manual for this antenna has got 20 steps in it. And even though it's really nice, you know, they give you photographs and diagrams and stuff like that, this is the kind of thing where you might get it home and you might worry that unless you're the sort of person who enjoys assembling IKEA furniture, that you're going to get lost somewhere. That's why I'm going to walk you through step by step, and I'm going to show you the stuff that they didn't tell you as I'm going through. The first thing they don't tell you is that you're going to need a screwdriver to put this antenna together. What you'll specifically need is a medium-sized Phillips screwdriver. And even though the antenna does come with one of the nicest assembly wrenches that I've ever seen, all sandblasted and polished, you still may want to use a 10 millimeter box wrench if you're more comfortable with it. The first step is simple enough. Take two pieces, mate them, and bolt them together. What they don't tell you, however, is that they intend you to tighten the bolt up all the way so that the end of the bolt actually sits flush. Here's a picture of what it should look like when it's done. From there, take the two posts and feed them into this yellow plastic shell. Then, take the two other posts called directors and feed them in the slots on the top and bottom of that very same shell. Now, what they don't tell you is that you might want to rub those posts with a little bit of WD-40 or grease so that they slide a little bit. That's important for later. Take the other yellow plastic shell, fit it over, and tighten it up with some Phillips head screws. Then, take that sort of white banana shaped piece and fit it over those posts and the directors. What they're trying to say is count in from the right, four on the top one, three on the middle one, and two on the bottom one. And if you're curious about which one to use, take a look at the inside. You see there's this up arrow that is actually pointing up, and that'll let you know that you're using the right one. Then take the other white plastic piece, put it over the first one through the other set of posts, and screw it in. There's a couple of things that they don't tell you here. First of all, they don't tell you that you really have to look carefully to make sure the white plastic pieces line up. They're not the same shape top and bottom. The second thing is that you have to make sure that the directors are sort of clamped together like I'm using them here. You don't want them spread far apart. At this point, you're going to change that later. Now take the two plastic tabs and fit them into the crescent shaped piece called K. Put one piece under the antenna and one piece over, and then bolt it in using one of the supplied bolts. What they don't tell you is that these two pieces are very similar, and the one that you want on the bottom is actually the one with the screw threads because you want to have the bolt part on the top. While you're doing this, the black plastic parts are going to move a little bit. That's perfectly be expected. You can let them flop a little bit and it's actually not a problem because as long as they fit into the pins, you're all set. Get that bolt nice and tight. That whole structure is steel, so it's not going to deform. Then, take the U-bolt and slide it into the mounting assembly. What they don't tell you is you've got to do that first, and it actually makes sense to put it on the mast at that point. Once the U-bolt is in, the whole thing can kind of slide in, just soft tighten, and then can right away get mounted to the mast. That's going to make it a lot easier to get the rest of the assembly done. In this next step, you're sort of clicking the piece into position so that those three directors actually have the proper spacing. This is not so hard. Just push on one side, pull on the other. In this next step, you're going to be putting on the reflectors. Notice that two of them are closer than a whole bunch of others. Those are the ones that are actually closest to the mast. Slide them in, and they fit inside notches. When you've got them inside the notches, and you're going to have to kind of pull up the plastic part in order to get everything in there, then just push the plastic down until it clicks into place. Repeat this step with the bottom reflector as well. Now, if you're following the instructions, this is actually where they would have you mounted to a mast. You could do it here, but I found it a lot easier to do it first before you put the reflectors in. What you can do at this point is make sure that the antenna is completely level. You can loosen and tighten these bolts to do that. What they're trying to tell you in this step is that if you're going to be using the weatherproof boot that they supplied, you're going to have to do it through bare wire. And then you're going to have to put on a coax connector. If you're using already finished RG6, you can find other weather boots that'll work with it. In the last two steps, they have you connect the RG6 cable 
and then position the cartridge so it snaps into place. This makes it water resistant. However, the final thing that they don't tell you is that you really need to make sure that you attach that RG6 connector before you snap in that cartridge because honestly it's almost impossible to do after you have snapped it all into place. Put it on nice and tight and then slot that in right on the aluminum and once it's slotted in properly it should slide into place and click. Now when you're using the power supply unit they don't tell you but the plug doesn't quite fit all the way in. That's normal. Also in case it's not clear the input from the antenna is on the left the output tip from the TV is on the right, and I've used a terminator cap even though it's not really necessary. The power supply unit is self-terminating, I just like to make sure that dust doesn't get in there. What I'm not showing you here is that you do have to ground this antenna to your local ordinance, and I would strap down the cables, even though I'm not showing you that in this picture, to make sure that everything stays nice and tight. This antenna really isn't that hard to put together if you understand what they didn't tell you.